decision. I figured a nice short trip to New York to make sure, yes, this is just as rotten as I remembered. I made the right decision by staying in San Diego. It was, it was a confidence trip. Here's a two-ball, one-strike pitch. High and in. Almost got him. Man, that ball. Solomon can be a very tough customer. He is not a pleasant man when you hit him. He'll go after you a little bit. He's not afraid to chase you. Pirates have a couple like that. Pasquale Perez is of the same vein. He will uh, go to Duke City, too. Right down the horn. Benilla taking all away. Three balls, two strikes. One down, no score, top of the first inning. Here's the 3-2 pitch. And it's ball four. The Padres get a runner on. The Padres yesterday never got ahead. They were behind in both ball games. They lost the first one four to two, and the night cap three two. So they'd love to get a little edge here to try to get things rolling. Gene Richards one for eight in the doubleheader yesterday, batting at 267, hitting in that key number three spot. Kennedy behind him, and Jones, Bass, Salazar, LaFay, and Wise in that order. Outfield shade to the left, infield to the right. Fastball is high and in, ball one. We talk about the split defense so often, Ted. They send the outfield one way, put the infield the other way, and this is something that's developed new, and I keep talking about it because it hasn't been seen much within the last uh, maybe two or three years. The charts are what do it. Ground balls go one way, fly balls the other off of certain bats. Two balls, no strike. Solomon having trouble falling behind the hitter, Gene Richards. Bonilla at first. No score. First inning, one down. There goes Juan on the hit and run. Drive to right field. Parker grabs it, and Bonilla has to get back. Richards hit it right on the snoot. Well, Richards didn't get going with the base hit, but that could be a good sign. Solomon is a fastball pitcher, and Richards jacked up on that one pretty good. Terry Kennedy is under some pressure in this series. Right behind home plate in the first row is his father. Now, you know, that's got to make you a little nervous. In this case, especially nervous since his dad knows a little bit about baseball. Something or other, yes. Terry batting at 300. Good curveball right in there. Kennedy went two for six in yesterday's doubleheader. This is the kind of a year where nobody is going to get tired. The midseason was a long layoff. So in effect, the season started on August the 10th. No balls, two strikes. Pretty good pair of hands. We had one little girl down there one day who missed seven out of seven. <laughs> pressure. The pressure was on and she choked. No score. Top of the first. Two down. Two strikes on Kennedy. Infield a little to the right side. Outfield deep. Terry has a good bat control. He can stay at home plate. Rarely, unless he chases a bad pitch, misses. When he swings at it, he'll get a piece of it. Big, strong catcher, 220 pounds. Does not hit for power yet because he's not going for it, but he will someday. He's a lot like Mike Ivey, who had averaged six or seven home runs a year for the Padres. Then he got away and started to mature and got into the 20s. can throw the best of them. Excellent. Watch that young catcher. He's good. A ball and two strikes. Tony Pena might have been the most sought-after ball player in the minor leagues last year by all clubs. Catchers are a very rare commodity. Solomon's move is not all that good. You can run on him if you get the right guy over there. A ball and two strikes, two down, no score, top of the first. Padres and the Buccos. That one's got a drop in, base hit. Kennedy may have broken his bat, but he lofted it into the center field. And the Padres had runners at first and second, two down. Kennedy just dropped one into center field. And that's the way he hits. Good bat control. 
Yeah, it did sound like Terry broke the bat. And this is something the Padres would love to be able to do. They've not been able to do that. Have not had the instinct to get a big inning and need, as Jerry said, when a pitcher isn't in the groove, to get to him, get to him early, get the big inning, and end things. The Padres were down twice in that doubleheader yesterday as the Pirates scored at least one in the first inning in both games. Of course, the first one was the three-run shot by Parker to get them up, and that gives the pitcher a whole lot of leeway to pitch with a lead the whole way. Here's Rupert Jones. Rupert takes a strike. Curveball dropped in there. Rupert batting at 247, a couple of homers and 20 RBIs. I think a classic of getting off to a good start is Steve Muir yesterday, who gave up the three-run homer to Parker and then closed the door just like a bolt coming down. They did nothing for the next five innings. But by then, as they say, the horse was out of the barn. At first base, uh, rather second base, Juan Bonilla. And at first base, Terry Kennedy. 1-1 one, one the count, two down. No score. Padres trying to move out in front quickly. On the ground to Montanez. He'll take it all by himself. And the Padres are out of there in the first inning. After a half inning, San Diego nothing. Pittsburgh coming up. Buds for the guys who make our engines purr like a kitten and roar like a lion. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Buds for you. Poison. We're the store that started as a lumber yard, and we buy in quantities that keep our prices down. So when you plan to add a room, panel a wall, put up shelving, or build a deck, come to Boise Cascade for quality home products. At the same time, you can pick up the tools, the hardware, and the paint to complete just about any home do-it-yourself project. Boise Cascade. From Hollywood, it's everybody's favorite game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Tic-Tac-Toe. You don't have to be a contestant in Hollywood to play Tic-Tac-Toe. Just turn to Channel 8 and you can play right at home. Huey, Dewey, and Louie are the nephews of one of Walt Disney's best-known creations, Donald Duck. Morty and Ferdy are nephews of another famous Disney character, Minan. Be challenged by questions in a variety of different subjects, from Disney to physics. Play along with Tic-Tac-Toe, weeknights at 7 on Channel 8. Well, we talked about Terry Kennedy's dad. See the guy in the funny white hat? That's Bertie Tebbets, former catcher with Detroit and Boston. Right next to him to the right is Bob Kennedy, the former general manager of the Chicago Cubs, and now scouting for the Cubs, and that's Terry's dad. He's right there to tell him what he did wrong. Let's try the defense uh, for Ted Leitner. I know he's all set to go. All righty, Jared. Brandy Bass, number five at first base for San Diego. Our pregame guest, Juan Bonilla, is second. There's Ozzie. The shortstop. Luis Salazar, third baseman. The Padre outfield, that's Gene Richards in left. Rupert Jones in center field. And the right fielder is Joe DeFay. Gentleman we've been speaking about here with his dad in attendance, Terry Kennedy. And on the mound, the right-hander, Rick Wise. Good six-inning uh, plus stint his last time out at the beginning of this road trip in St. Louis. Has not been able to really produce a whole lot from a record standpoint. But he's been pitching well. You know, Ted, his ERA of 3.32 is about as good as anybody on the staff, with the exception of Chris Welsh and Juan Eichelberger, and yet he's not winning. That 2-5 and five makes it look like he's having a bad year, but he's not at all. That's true. Rick Wise, 35-year-old right-hander, 168 wins, going after Omar Marino, who yesterday scored four runs, walked three times, and on top of that went three for five. He had himself some afternoon in the doubleheader. Average at 272, no homers, 20 RBIs. He is a man who loves to run. Ball one outside. Paul Moreno, number 326 consecutively after playing both games of the doubleheader yesterday. He's a wire. He's bigger than people realize. He goes about 6'3 or 4. The big, long legged speedster. Stole. 96 bases last year. Not bad. The 2-0 pitch to Omar. 
Right center field, Rupert better hurry. Can't get it a drop. So Marino now is four for six in the series. Drops a single in the center. Well, as Jerry told you, he spent most of the doubleheader yesterday on base. Scoring four times. Good, complete ball play with the speed. Can play some center. Can hit. This broadcast comes to you through the courtesy of Budweiser, Toyota, and Union Oil with the permission of the San Diego Padres. Any rebroadcast or other use of the broadcast without express consent is prohibited. Here's Tim Foley, good hit and run man. Yesterday went one for five in the doubleheader, batting at 257. A great man for Marino because he'll take a pitch on Marino, can't run. Wise will give that high kick and you can run on him. Kennedy will have to be alert on this one. You got one of the best base runners going, and Wise is a guy who does not get rid of the ball too quickly. Let's see how it develops. Look at the lead by Marino. He's just testing Wise. No score. Bucks put their first man on. The same thing happened in the first game yesterday. Marino doubled in that one. He was on to start both games. There he goes. If we can get a replay of what Foley did to try to upset Kennedy, that was a stroke of pure veteranism. Look what Foley does. Now, as Marino goes, Foley sticks his bat right in front of Kennedy. Well, you don't see that, but Marino has no trouble at all stealing that base because the ball popped out of Kennedy's glove as Foley just kept his bat out there and moved it back at the last split second. It keeps the catcher back and it makes it hard for him to handle it. 25 stolen bases for Moreno. He can move. And the bun is a dandy. Moreno now at third base. So a base hit, a stolen base, and a sacrifice. Pittsburgh with a runner at third and one away, and the big guy coming on. And I got to get this one in right now, Ted, because it's very interesting. <laughs> Dave Parker was blasting the team position because the team position said... A hip pointer is when you're not hitting and you point to your hip. <laughs> Accusing Parker of maybe dogging it. And Parker says, a jackass is a team doctor that tries to tell jokes. <laughs> now, that has to be a happy crew down there. Oh, uh, no kidding. I mean, that's, that, that's quoted, folks. I had to make that up. There it is, right there in the paper. Yep. Pittsburgh <laughs> <laughs> Post Gazette. You notice that little white thing on uh, Dave's ear? That's a diamond earring. Outside for a ball. See that right there? Yep. I've never mentioned it when I talked to him. When you look up, that has a tendency <laughs> to make one humble. <laughs> He's a super guy, and he can play, believe me. He's had a lot of injuries. He's played hurt a lot of the time. The one on pitch. Left field, that should do it. With Marino's speed, he'll coast in from third. Parker gets the sacrifice fly. Pittsburgh moves ahead 1-0 in the first inning. So Dave Parker drives in a big run. Bucks on top. That'll bring up Bill Madlock, who has taken over the National League lead in hitting. Number five, Bill Madlock. Madlock went by Andre Dawson. Madlock at 3.30. Rose at 3.28. Pete had a couple of hits today, so he might uh, be moving on. I'm on Dawson at 3.28 in the National League. Two down. Run across. Bucks lead at 1-0. We're in the bottom of the first. Ball one. If you'd like to keep up with the numbers, Parker, 33 RBIs. Might keep the booze off him for about uh, 10 more minutes here in Pittsburgh today. And Ozzie grabs a line drive. Not well hit off of Bill Madlock. So there's a run on the board on one base hit after one inning. Pittsburgh one, San Diego nothing. Incentives from Toyota to sell a whole herd of trucks this month, so you can cook up a deal on America's best-selling small trucks. Toyota's prices may never be lower, but act fast to get America's best import selection of long beds, standard beds, 4x4s, even 3 quarter tons. Kick up your heels and cook up a deal on Toyota. Toyota. And that's no bum steer. 
I signed up for one of those tax-free savings accounts. Oh? Yeah, I'm earning 17%, and it's tax-free October 1st. I sure need a tax break, but... But what? Well, what if the rates go down? You can't get your money out. Yes, I can. No, you can't. They won't let you. Yes, I can. If you sign up for a tax-free account at Home Savings Now, you can change your mind and withdraw your money anytime before October 1st, and you'll earn 17% until then. That's free accounts of home savings and loans. Here's Randy Bass coming on for the San Diego Padres, batting in that key number six spot. He'll be followed by Luis Salazar and Joe LaFay. On the mound, Ed Solomon. Solomon, a big guy. That's one of the best balls that Bass has turned on in some time. He got out in front of a fastball off Ed Solomon, who's 6'3", 200 pounder, and ripped it down that right field line. Ball girl played the term terribly. Well, that's one for two. We'll keep track. The one strike pitch to Randy. Curveball. Solomon's breaking ball has been very good. Bass is batting a 223 with four homers and 18 RBIs. And Solomon's breaking ball appears to be a better pitch tonight thus far than his fastball. Richards turned on the fastball and ripped it into right field into Parker's waiting glove. One ball, two strikes. Don't forget, Padres, after going to Chicago, get back on Thursday the 27th. It'll be family bargain night. All reserve seats cut in half. General admission, only a buck. Count rolls at a ball and two strikes. And then on Saturday, the 29th, after taking Friday off, it'll be Dow T-shirt night. It'll be a twinite doubleheader against the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals in town Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Join us at the big ballpark when the Padres come home. Count rolls at a ball and two strikes. Outfield dead straight away to Bass, deep. Infield uh, plays him almost like an exaggerated pull, especially the shortstop Foley is almost behind second, way over there. Deep at second, Garner, Martinez off the line at first base. They bunch him in the middle in most cases. And Randy driving him over here, Parker. There's the AstroTurf for you. Oh, man. Bass is going to end up with three. Dave Parker got too close to the ball, and you saw what happened. And that's the danger of the synthetic field. Let's uh, make Dave feel at home. Boo. They were on his case, have been all year, half, back from last year. Now watch the play here. Knows it's going to be a hit, but came in too close, as Jerry said. Needless to say, on grass, that's a base hit, single, and that's all. But there is uh, Randy on his way to third. It's gotten to the point where, Parker, there is trade talk, and it might be for the betterment in terms of how he's accepted here if he did play someplace else. He's a great talent, but they do not like him right now. Luis Salazar had a big doubleheader yesterday. Went five for eight, hitting a 298. Has a home run on 18 RBIs, and that one was ball one. But when you talk about Dave Parker, don't mention trade to Chuck Tanner, the mm -hmm. Pittsburgh manager. He gets very nervous. Yeah, that's the kind of trade that the fans would make a lot faster than Chuck would. On the ground and in the hole. No chance for Foley to do anything. And the Padres, just like that, two batters, a run across, a runner at first base, and the number eight hitter, Joe LaFay, stepping in. Padres tie it up. Luis has had a great time here so far in two days against his former club, which rode him off, and it must be greatly satisfying to see. You see Foley go in the hole, make the backhand stop, but had no chance at all to get Salazar, no chance at all to get Randy Bass. But Salazar, five for eight yesterday, and now starts out here. Infield single, RBI, we are tied. 1-1 one, one ball game, second inning. Here's Jalo LaFay. He'll be followed by Rick Wise. Lafay has had his troubles, batting only a 229, one for seven. Joe doubled and scored the second Padre run in the first game yesterday. Strike two. And Joe would love to have that one back. That was a good fastball right out over the plate at the belt. 
Joe leads the Padres in home runs with six, has 17 RBIs. Well hit, and they're going after Solomon. Salazar's going to try third. He'll make it easy, and the Padres, still with nobody out, have runners at the corners. Salazar scoots over to third. LeFay rips one to center field, and Solomon having a battle himself. Well, he put the Padres down. He had a little bit of trouble with the walk at a base hit in the first. Here is uh, LeFay, which is the third hit of this inning. So Solomon has gotten exactly no one out. And, of course, the play, the misplay by Parker in right field looms extremely large, adding to the fact that Solomon is struggling. You saw Montañez holding on LeFay. Wise will be the batter. Rick Wise with runners at first and third. Nobody out. Padres with a chance to have a big inning. Way outside, breaking ball. Rick batting at .056. The Bucks currently are five and seven in the National League East. They're two and a half behind the front-running St. Louis Cardinals, who are six and three. Just getting underway. Baseball second half. Bad pitch, and Rick went after one ball, one strike. One one tie, second inning. Padres got a triple from Bass, a single from Salazar to drive Bass across, a single by LaFay to put Salazar at third. One one pitch. Two balls, one strike. One pitch and the suicide squeeze as Salazar hung up. But the ball is dropped by Madlock and they get it at the plate. A good play by Ed Solomon to get Salazar on a missed suicide squeeze. Well, that's a tough break for the Padres. All you got to do is make contact, and the run is home. He just flat out missed the ball, so Louis is obviously dead coming down. Although, if the ball rolled a little bit further away from Matlock right there, went off his knee, and Matlock made a heck of a recovery and an underhand throw to Solomon to get it. Came close to blowing it. Padres tried it in St. Louis, and it was fouled off when they had Gene Richards coming down the line. Wise could not make contact. 2-5-1 if you're keeping score, and all the way to third base is LaFay. And Wise now... Takes it outside. They ask for the appeal from the first base umpire. Plate umpire says, nope, no appeal on that one. Three balls, two strikes. Three and two the count. Boy, that's frustrating. I know what happens when they munt the ball right through and that guy's standing staring at the catcher. Mm -mm. Frozen at third base is LaFay and out at first base is Wise. So the play goes six to three. And Budweiser introduces the new 12-pack, a half case of ice-cold Budweiser in non-returnable models. Now more than ever, this Bud's for you. Shortstop, Ozzie Smith. Runner at third base, Joe LaFay. Ozzie will try to get him across. It's a 1-1 ball game. Top of the second inning. Whoops. There was ball one. If it hits you, it won't hurt because you go down. You don't feel much. The one zero pitch. Ozzy drills one to right field. Padres take the lead two to nothing. Make that two to one. Good bit of hitting by Ozzy Smith. He ripped the fastball inside part of the plate to right field for a solid single. 17 RBIs for the Wiz. That has to be satisfying since Solomon came right at his face in the first one. A fastball up high. They drive him down, and Ozzie comes right back, digs in, and lines one solidly to right field. 2-1 San Diego. Padres with four hits in this inning. Five overall are leading 2-1. Ozzie will run if he gets the chance, but he at the plate. Let's see how it develops. Get Ozzie mad. He'll really go after you. The scrappy little guy. Ha. Huh. There's where the number two hitter does get an advantage now and then with a man that can run. He'll get a lot of pitch outs. And that's his advantage because Benilla now is ahead of the pitcher. One ball, no strikes. 
see if they do it again. Two balls, no strikes. Two and another count. Tripled by Bass, singles by Salazar and LaFay. The miss suicide squeeze blew one, but then Ozzie ripped a single to right field. Padres lead it two to one. Outfield shade to the right side. Benilla will hit it that way. Pena, the young catcher, keep your eye on him. He has an excellent arm and very quick reaction. High three and oh. Three balls, no strikes. Solomon struggling in this inning. Juan's moved around as you look at Solomon in the uh, the lineup. Eighth, sixth earlier in this trip, then third, now second. I asked him on the pregame if he cared. He said he really didn't worry about it. Three balls, one strike. Did he say where he'd like to hit most? He said clean up, and I said I'll talk to Frank, see what I can do for you. <laughs> but don't, don't get your hopes up. All right, all right. Then he had batting 286. Let's see if Ozzie goes three and one. There he goes. Up the middle, Foley can't get it, dribbles behind, Foley into the outfield, Garner's up with it, and Ozzy with a big speed gets to third. Man, can he run, what instincts. See, the ball did not get past Foley and Garner too far. A lot of players, I think, with less speed and confidence and heads up play. Now watch here. Not very far away. Ozzy just never, he made his decision, he just was going to third, and Garner had no chance to get him. The Wiz can play, you know? Yeah, I'll say one thing about Solomon. He is making a lot of bad pitches. He's throwing the ball right down the middle, and ball players love that. Get it out over the plate down the middle, they think it's just fine. Here's Gene Richards, who lined out to right field in the first inning. Padres trying to have a big one. Curveball in there for a strike. That's the most effective pitch that Solomon has had since he's been out there. Perez is running down to possibly pick up some pitching for Solomon, who is floundering out there at the moment. One strike pitch. Tried the breaking ball and missed this time. One ball, one strike. Ozzie at third base. At first base, Bonilla. Richards hitting third. Padres lead it two to one. We're in the top of the second inning. Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Fouled up. I haven't gotten around to explaining that this year. Three Rivers? The Allegheny and the Monongahela meet to form the Ohio. Nicely done. I thought so. I have to do that once a trip into Pittsburgh. Right out behind right field. If you can look over right field, you can find it. One ball, two strikes. Ooh, ooh. Richards has hit two on the button. There's nothing to show for it. The Padres pick up two runs. After one and a half, San Diego two, Pittsburgh one. This bud's for the guys who got what it takes to shake, rattle, and keep on rolling. This bud's for you, for all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this bud's for you. That's a terrific car. You want it? It's yours. Cheap. Cheap? They don't make them like that anymore. I know. But a beauty like that deserves leaded premium gas. That's hard to find these days. I can find it. Where? Right there. Union 76 still has leaded premium? Union 76 Super. One of the best leaded premiums around. Now, still want to sell that car cheap? Cheap? They don't make them like this anymore. Go with the spirit. Where you could still get leaded premium. The spirit of 76. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry I'm late, but my watch stopped. It has to. It's been running fast all week. <laughs> running your weekday afternoons with comedy. This question of the game is brought to you by Food Basket from Bob Chang, C H A N G, of 733 Santa Olivia in Solana Beach. He wants to know who threw the pitch when Hank Aaron hit his 715th home run and what team did he play for? We're going to have that answer for you, I think, about the sixth inning. 
Who threw the pitch when Hank Aaron hit home run number 715 to surpass Babe Ruth's all-time record? If we look at Hank, uh, I mean at uh, Frank Howard, who can hit him like uh, Hank Aaron, too. He had a few for distance. Here's Mike Easler batting at 307, two for four in the doubleheader yesterday. Overlapping grip. Look at that right hand over the knob, outside for a ball. To the right hand. Watch. This. Some guys like to get the feel of that thing right in the palm of their hand. Look at that. Got to be strong to carry it back that way. Here's the 1-0 pitch. One ball, one strike. Easler, the 307, has seven home runs and 32 RBIs attached to it. Rick Wise sitting on top of a 2-1 lead. We're in the bottom of the second inning. It'll be Easler, Pena, and Montanez coming up, the first three hitters. Mike struggled long and hard to get to the big legs and finally made it the last two years. He has done very well. Good curveball. Swung over the top of that. That was a good slider by Rick Wise. He's got a good one. Rick, 35-year-old right-hander, going up against Ed Solomon, a 30-year-old right-hander for the Buckos. One ball, two strikes. Second inning just underway for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Count stays at a ball and two strikes. Giesler got his wish, got home to Cleveland at the All-Star game. In fact, he got home earlier than that. He didn't expect to be taking any vacations back home during July, but as it turned out, he was able to do that. Much to the chagrin of Mike, the Pirates, and most of the baseball fans in America. But he got to go back which was his goal, and he was hitting and playing well. If they had probably continued balloting and playing and so forth, without the strike, he probably would have been voted to the team. Probably, well, I wouldn't say voted to it, but certainly added to it without any qualms. Two balls, two strikes, Easler. Trying to get something going for Pittsburgh. A foul. Well, we'd like to say hi to John Candelaria, who's out in San Diego, I'm sure, watching this ball game. He's had some arm problems, and your old buddy, Wilbur Stargell, said hi, Candy, from him and all of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Get well soon. They need you. They're going for a battle, for a race. They need you in it. Most definitely. Torn bicep muscle, which for a pitcher is an occupational uh, detriment and hazard, and they must have him on that staff. Not that deep, but Joe LaFay will handle it. One away. Easler, skies high to short right field. And look at LaFave. Do you don't think he isn't in the ball game? He's out in right field. Now, that's an infielder's job. Mm -hmm. You know, the infielders always turn around and tell everybody how many outs. He tells everybody how many outs from right field. And nobody's looking at him. Except me. <laughs> Tony Pena, batting at 327. Two for seven in the doubleheader yesterday. Hasn't been up that much. Two home runs, 11 RBIs. They have brought this young man along slowly, and he has taken over as number one behind the plate. Excellent defensive catcher, and is hitting as well. And there you see the whiz. Doesn't look hard, but he just makes it look easier than that. Two up, two down. Second inning for the Buckos. Here's Willie Montanez stepping up. Willie got here yesterday in time for the doubleheader. Now, he wasn't unhappy in Montreal from the standpoint of the city, but he was very unhappy from the standpoint that it was hardly playing. He came here with a batting average of about 177. Yesterday's doubleheader, he went 0 for 4. That's down to 167, but he hasn't been up 60 times. He's glad to be here, glad where he can play, and he's a tough cookie in the clutch when he gets rolling. He's only 33 years old. He has also spent time with 10 different clubs. Ball one. Likes the ball out and away. He can hit the ball to left field with anybody. Did you get along well with him last year? Yeah, but I had no trouble at all. Came out to play. Mm -hmm. Good hit and run, man. Best bat control of anybody on the club. And that ball is foul. One ball, one strike. What you can do with Montanez is, if you don't want to bunt, you can start the runner, and he will hit that ball. If it's over his head on the ground, he will get a hold of it. Mm -hmm. Excellent bat control. You can play a game with him. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't scare easy either. Good when you need the run. Good clutch hitter. Willie really dropped one into left field. Broken bat single. 
A two-out single for Montanez. It is amazing that the man can play some first. He can hit, as Jerry said, and do all the things just enumerated. But he has moved around incredibly. There's the bat in half. He got the little part in his hand. <laughs> but he has modeled uniforms. I mean, Phillies, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, San Francisco, Montreal. It goes on and on and on. And San Diego, obviously. Here's Phil Garner batting in a key number eight spot, hitting at 245, one for six in a doubleheader. That was a bunt for a base hit his last time up. And that helped Pittsburgh get the third run. It finally won the ball game. It came in the seventh inning. One ball to count to Garner. Started with Oakland. Now with Pittsburgh, an excellent second baseman. Base hit. With two down, Pittsburgh gets singles from Montanez and Garner. Runners at first and second. The pitcher, Ed Solomon, coming up now. That's two hits in the inning. That is three for the ball game against Rick Wise. Padres have doubled the hit production of Pittsburgh, and they lead 2-1. Ozzy can't get quite to, to that one. There's Phil Garner. Ed Solomon, the batter, hit over 200 last year, has a lifetime of about 275. Can hit if the ball's right out there where he can reach it. He's a dangerous man. 2-1, Padres leading, bottom of the second. Salazar, not in time, everybody's safe. The bases are loaded. Montanez at third, Garner at second, Solomon at first. Well, in retrospect, he probably had a better chance to get Solomon down the line, but again, he was off balance, moving away, but had no chance at all at second base, so we will never know. Made the only play he probably thought he could at that time. There's Solomon. They are loaded with two gone. And all of it, Ted, with two down. Right now, Marino, who drilled a single to center field to start the game, moving in with the bases loaded. Marino has raised his average to 275. Four for six in the series, three walks, five runs scored. He has been red hot for Pittsburgh. Danny Boone up, throwing in the Padre bullpen down the right field line. Montanez at third, Garner at second, Solomon at first. He can run. One strike to count on Marino. It's a big out for Rick Wise. Good slider. Got it in a very good spot. Inside, just above the knees. That's a tough place to handle a breaking ball coming in on you. There's Danny Boone. 5 feet 8, 131 pounds at last count. Little guy. I tell you, he has what we call intestinal fortitude. Guts, if you want to use that word. He's not afraid. He goes out there. He'll throw the ball over the plate. Two strikes. Wise, though, trying to get out of a very tough spot. Bases are loaded. Marino waiting. Big pitch coming up. Left field. Richards has it under control, and the Padres get out of it. No runs, three base hits, three men left. We go to the third inning. Padres two, Pittsburgh one. Great Moments in Charge of History brought to you by La Mesa RV Center. In 1969, quarterback Marty Domrays became the only first-round player the Chargers ever drafted from the Ivy League. He played three seasons before being traded to Baltimore. Domrays never became a star, although he did write a book about his years with the Chargers. The teleporting on the TV side, Theodore. All right, Jerry. Jerry Kennedy, Rupert Jones, Randy Bass here for the Padres who lead 1-0 as we go top of the third. 2-1, San Diego. Eddie Solomon starting come all the way to this point. Rick Wise, same way for San Diego. Inside a ball. Neither has been particularly sharp. 
A lot of balls bouncing around and base hits. Not that much run production, but plenty hits. Ten in two innings. Two balls, no strength to Terry. Six hits for the Padres, four for Pittsburgh. And they're three and oh. They hadn't been close one time. Solomon's popping the glove, Ted, but uh, nothing's happening. Uh, the Padres are really popping the baseball. They're going after it, getting out in front of this fastball and tearing into it. It sounds good from here, but there's not really enough velocity to make it work. Yesterday's doubleheader, 4-2, two, 3-2, two, Pirates win two. They were playing very well as a team coming on when the strike began. See if they can uh, recapture it. 3-0 fastball missing badly. So the leadoff walk to Terry Kennedy. Had him a single in the first. Gets on aboard here for Rupert Jones. Padre Baseball brought to you by your local Toyota dealer, where now's the time to cook up a deal. Rupert 0 for 6 yesterday. Still looking for hit number one of this uh, series. Middle of the road trip. We'll be on the air with you tomorrow morning. Final game of this series. Then the Padres on to Chicago. No television there. See, Montagnier is playing behind Terry. And Solomon continues to miss and miss badly. Ted, all those uh, Chicago games are day games, and that really tests the metabolism of everybody. You know, you're used to the night ball and relaxing during the day, sleeping in. Suddenly, whammo, 8 o'clock in the morning. Everybody up. Drill sergeant's there, pounding on the door. Takes two days to wake up. My drill sergeant didn't put it quite like uh, everybody up. He was a little stronger than that. More emphatic. 2-0. Tipped the bed over, did he? No. He could do that. They had the, the double bunk beds, and he would lift up the bottom one and then let it slam, and that was his way. Either that or flick the lights on and off or yell uh, extreme obscenities. Solomon behind, 2-0. They should get a pair. Nope. Rupert hustled down the line. And again, Garner had to wait for the big second hop to come down. And Foley got his from Kennedy. Well, here's the Astor turf again, Ted. The second baseman can't charge. He's got to wait for that big hop. And by staying back, as you see, Garner waiting for the big hop, it took him a little while, and he lost the double play because of it. Had that been on grass, he could have gone right after the ball, caught it maybe five or six feet farther up, and might have made the double play. Crazy game, what they've done to it. And this is Tartan turf, I might say. The only one like it in the National League. I'll explain the difference if you want to spend a half hour talking about it. Nah. Okay. <laughs> Here's Randy Bass. Oh, dear. That's it. Four, six, three. And the first real quick, easy inning for the right-handed starter, Eddie Solomon, for the Pirates. Nothing across. And nobody left for San Diego on the top of the third here at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You're Padre. That's Jerry. I'm Ted. There's Dave over there. Well, we cut. We take half the press box for this between radio and TV. 2-1 San Diego. A lot of hitting if that's what you like so far. Tim Foley, then Dave Parker and Bill Madlock, your basic heart of the Pirate batting order against the right-hander Rick Wise, who's allowed four base hits, one run, as we go to the last of the third here in Pittsburgh. Outside, ball one. Pirates won in the first. On a sacrifice fly by Dave Parker. That is their only run. The pods, two in the top of the second. With a bunch of hits. Luis. With the great arm. One up, one down. Bargain night. Don't forget that's August 27th, 7 o'clock game. St. Louis Cardinals in town. All tickets will be cut in half. That's the field, press, plaza, loads, upper reserve, all chopped in half. General admission sold the day of the game only for a dollar. Cardinals in town. And don't forget on Saturday, that'll be a Thursday the 27th, Saturday the 29th, it is Dow T-shirt night. 10,000 colorful Padre T-shirts given away to the youngsters 14 and under. Here's the big guy, Dave Parker. Still has not lost the weight. Up above 240. Time that well. Base hit center field. He had the sacrifice fly that drove in the only pirate run in the first. Now gets the board here with a one-out single. Hits are now 6-5, Padres. Here's the lead. 
speed. It's 2-1. Excuse me, Jerry. I was going to say a high slider. Way up there. That was a bad pitch by Rick. And Parker couldn't lay off. He didn't hit it well, but he found a hole. You know, it's unfortunate. Parker, a two-time batting leader, one of the best hitters in all of baseball, one of the best players, has had a lot of debilitating injuries. He's going. Should drop. Parker held up to see if it would drop. And he will be at third. Memlock is at second. Well, let's check this. Madlock dropped one into left center field. Parker, a little bit confused, couldn't find the ball, delayed going around second. But when he did, Ripper Jones had to get him because when he threw to third, he lost the lead run. That's Madlock heading into second base. When he missed Parker, he lost the play. And he missed Parker by a wide margin, as you can see. There goes Madlock into second base. The base hit now will put the Bucks ahead. And the batter is from the left side, Mike Easler, as you look at the runners at second and third. Got the first man, Foley, and now singled by Parker, hit and run single by Madlock. The hits are even at six apiece in two and a half innings plus. Ted, to show that neither pitcher has really been overwhelming, there has not been a strikeout in the ballgame. So they are not buzzing that baseball tonight. Easler flying to right field to Joel DeFay. His other trip in the second, that's out of play. Yankees finally won a ball game. Steinbrenner will be ecstatic. 5-0 New York over Kansas City. New Yankee Russell, the winner split to off the loser. Frazier got the save. I think Steinbrenner tried to activate himself, didn't he, for that game, play right field? See, he's already activated constantly. At least his mouth is. They had a big flap in New York over Willie Randolph's absence from a special practice that George had had in their call for in their day off. That's the latest Yankee controversy in New York. Side one and one. Dave Parker at third. There's Madlock at second base. When the owner calls the workouts, it kind of emasculates the manager's will, Good I would point. think. I think it's very important that Gene Michael call the workout. There really is no debate as to who's in charge of New York, no matter who it is. Michael, Hauser, Martin, it's Steinbrenner. There's no controversy about that. By him, one and two. What had happened was... Willie Randolph had been uh, at a benefit for the New Jersey Mental Health Association, but didn't call until just before the workout that he wouldn't be there. So they find him, and it's caused a big flap because they said, hey, what's more important, a workout for George Steinbrenner or the New Jersey Mental Health Association? So they find Willie Randolph, the second baseman, $500, and that's the big flap currently going on among the Yankees. But they did win the ball game today, which will help. 5 nothing over the Royals. Why is working 1-2 with one away here? Runners at second and third. Trying to protect a 2-1 lead. He goes 2-2 on Mike Easler. Good bit of bat control by Easler. The pitch before was up there. It was a bad pitch, and Easler chased it. This time, Wise tried to take him right up the ladder, and Easler didn't fall for it. So, Mike Easler, a little bit of control there. Saved himself a strikeout. Jerry mentioned Easler's been around. Now, check this. Covington, Coco, Columbus, Denver, Houston, Denver, Houston, Des Moines, Tulsa, California, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. That's his career. Airline pilots fly less than this man has in the last 10 years. Listen, most of that was on a bus. Don't <laughs> kid yourself. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Easler, who will call time. Two for four in the first game yesterday, did not play in the second. Another doubleheader as the Pirates won them both, 4-2 and 3-2. Three, 3-2. Two. Tony Pena, the catcher, is on deck. He's lured 3-0-7. 13 doubles, 2 triples, 7 homers, 32 RBIs. There's Pena, just mentioned, on deck. Three balls, two strikes with one away. Wise against Easler here, bottom of the third. Two runners in scoring position. And they're both going to come home. LaFay's got the great arm, though. What an arm. Two away. Easler gets the RBI singled. He goes to second and a throw home, but they tested LaFay's arm, and that, Jerry, in retrospect, is a mistake. 
I wish you could have seen Joe Lynette. He didn't know what to do with Bill Madlock. He held him up with one hand and waved him in the other. <laughs> and Madlock decided, well, what the heck, I'll try it. <laughs> it was really an unusual call because Lynette knows LaFay's arm, but he wasn't quite sure. A man lock at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his ass like Milton Burrow used to say. <laughs> no more applause, and he'd be waving for more at the same time. Please don't stop. Please don't stop. <laughs> There's Parker scoring, and the arm by LaFay out by nine yards. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that was close. Tony Pena with two away. The run in. We're tied at 2 2. Missed the ball. Easler down to second base, as we said, on the throw home. The Madlock is out 9-2. to two. Pena grounded to Ozzie. His other trip against Rick Wise in the second. 2-2 two -two tie, bottom of the third. Pittsburgh with two away now. The runner at second base. They could get the go-ahead in here, and they will. Easler scores. It is 3-2 with the Pirates lead for the second time in the ballgame. Here comes manager Frank Howard as we look at the replay of Pena getting a slider. That's uh, Rick Wise's curveball. Got out in front of it. Got it into center field. Buckos take a 3-2 lead. And Danny Boone goes at it again down on the Padre bullpen. When Pena got that base hit, I look at Joe Lynette, who's a super guy at third base. There's Al Monchak, the first base coach, talking to Pena. And Lynette just pounded his fist into his hand. He said he knew he'd, he wanted that run back. He knew he'd blown it and uh, very upset. And that is all for Rick Wise very quickly. I thought maybe they might uh, give him another crack, but uh, apparently they want the left-hander in there, and Wise will leave the ball game. But in, in a sense, uh, Ted, we've got a lot of base hits on the board, uh, eight hits in less than three innings, and Rick is having one of those nights where he just didn't have his good stuff. So there's Rick. As you hear that, can you hear the music in the background? We three kings of Oria, come on. So Pena chases Wise as he gets his 12th RBI on the single here to get the second run in in the inning for Pittsburgh. As you look at uh, Rick Go to the water cooler as his pitching coach Chuck Estrada was right behind him. So it'll be Dan Boone. Rocky performance. Let me commiserate a little bit for the starting pitcher as we look at Frank Howard, who has really been tested the last two a week or so. The Padres are having a tough time, but they are 2-10 and ten in the second half. And Frank has managed to keep a stiff upper lip, but it has to be painful. A starting pitcher, as you know, will be out there every fifth day, and when he is knocked around inside of three innings, he's got to wait another four or five days before he goes again, and that's agony. You know, you just got to keep waiting and waiting and waiting and hoping that something good will happen, and... When you get out there, you'll have a start, and you'll have a win. But in the case of a Danny Boone, he's been coming in the middle relief, and at times has gone into short relief. So he's done a good job for the Padres. Overall, he's been extremely consistent. High strikeout ratio for innings pitch Danny has had. Had a rocky start in, rather, a rocky appearance in relief in St. Louis. He appeared yesterday in the second game of the doubleheader in relief of Tim Lawler, who was the loser, and Dan pitched an inning. Struck out one, no runs, no hits, did a good job. So he is back on a more solid footing since the bad outing in St. Louis. And overall, you have no complaints with him. There have been surprises on this team, like uh, Juan Bonilla's play at second base and this guy, the pitching of Chris Welsh and John Urea. That section's hard to get seats in, by the way. That's <laughs> way up there. Way up there. Nosebleed City. Dan, an ERA of 2.19. This is his 22nd appearance, of course, all in relief. He has one save. And this is Willie Montañez coming on here. Six men to come to the plate against the Padres with two gone now and two runs in. Gave him the breaking ball, fouled it off. Danny Hugh Boone. It is not Daniel Boone, even all that publicity in the stories in spring training about uh, distant, distant relation to Daniel Boone. But it's Danny guy's never seen a bear or a bar or whatever <laughs> bar right Balk. call one on him in st louis and again here that's his fifth balk of the year let's watch it watch that front foot 
Yeah, he went behind the back leg. You can see that even from the side. He, you can't go past that back leg. That is a balk, a legitimate one. The one at St. Louis was a hand balk, and you couldn't really see it. Mm -hmm. But that was very visible. Breaking ball with a runner in scoring position, and Bass is there. With Dan Cover inside retired as Boone comes on to get one man. And put away the Pirates in the bottom of the third, but they come up with two runs and four base hits, no errors. And they leave a man after three full here in Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Padres hand the lead. It now belongs to the Pittsburgh Pirates. 3-2. The crowd and the inside of that guy's glove. Okay, we're done. Put it down. Thank you. Padres fell behind 1-0. They came back to take the lead 2-1. They have now been overtaken again by Pittsburgh 3-2. As Luis Salazar will lead it off, bottom third of the Padre lineup with Salazar LaFay and the pitcher Dan Boone scheduled here in the top of the fourth. Pirates 3-2 and Dave Campbell has winged it away from radio to television. Indeed. <laughs> well, <laughs> you have a way with words. Yes. Well said. Luis has been red hot in this series against his former team or organization. Inside with a breaking ball, 1-0. Eddie Solomon stayed to a lead. Don't bet the ranch he'll hold it the way he's been pitching. Luis at infield single. His first time up in the second. Well hit ball, but Moreno will get there. One away. Article in today's paper by quoting Chuck Tanner says Omar Moreno is the best defensive center fielder in the National League. I think Gary Maddox and Andre Dawson fans would argue, but he sure builds a case for himself on this one. He gets a great jump. Joe LaFay, a single score to run in the second when the Padres scored those two and took a 2-1 lead, although it has not held up. Strike to him. Salazar, we saw him last year. When he gets in a good groove, he can get as hot as anybody in baseball. He's keeping his head very still right now, and he is really swinging a great bat. Laid off one and one. Mentioned there was a uh, sportscaster on TV in St. Louis who had uh, narrated some highlights of the uh, Cardinal Padre game and mentioned Joe LaFoy <laughs> during, <laughs> during Joe's triple. There's Luis with Juan Bonilla to his right. And Ozzy. Now I can see Lefevre. Where'd he get Lafoy? Well hit ball if it stays fair, but it will not. I don't want to mention any names. Who's Jay Randolph? <laughs> Veteran NBC announcer. <laughs> Speaking of words, do you understand all the dialect in, in this part of the country? I mean, I'm not saying they're wrong, but do you understand it? Uh, I do only because it's very similar to Philadelphia. I see. Okay. In terms of saying things like attitude and uh, going to Baltimore and G Jet. J E E T J E T. G Jet. G -jet. Means, means have you eaten yet? Right. G Jet. 2 2 should reach the seats. I found a book downtown today. It's called the, A Guide to Conventioneers How to Speak Pittsburghese. And it does have some rather classic lines. Yeah, they're very similar to Philadelphia. Yeah, I saw the Eagles in here. Eagles? I-G-L-L-S. Two balls, two strikes to LaFay. Nobody on, one away, three, two Pirates. As the pods bat on the top of the fourth, time to breaking ball, and that should reach the seats also. They had 19,000. That's their largest crowd post strike for the doubleheader yesterday. They will be well below that today. Big fireworks show here last night and it was a good one. They of course club leader had a home run in St. Louis. Half a dozen to lead the Padre roster in that department deceptive power but he definitely has it 
foul again. Holds at 2-2. Dan Boone scheduled next. There is... There is Dan. He is close to the on-deck circle. The ball girl is like two for three. I mean, come on here. <laughs> too hot to handle. Oh, God. Parker just rolled her back the ball, and she missed it again. And I mean, it was rolling slowly. Fastball's outside. He goes full on Joe LaFay. Solomon has struggled. I think it's about a one and one and one hundred shot that he will maintain a three two lead unless they get him some more. I doubt that he'll be around come the ninth. Got him. Solomon starts a slider outside and brings it in over the outside corner. I don't know if he's exactly aiming it there. Almost like a backup slider, but it was a dandy pitch. Your Union 76 dealer now has an oil that can improve gas mileage compared to regular oils. Ask him about Union Long Distance Purple Motor Oil. Right in time, wasn't it? Dan Boone <laughs> goes down 5-3. The Padres go down 1-2-3 in the fourth. As Solomon settles down, he got Saddles out of Fay and Dan Boone. Top of the fourth, Padres 0. It is still 3-2 Pirates. This buds for everybody who sets them up just so they can knock them down. They're league bowlers, and they know that when you join a league, you get rolling. The competition, the excitement with good times to spare. You find it all in the leagues at your local bowling center. And league bowlers can compete in the Budweiser Hall of Fame tournament coming this winter. So join a league and get rolling. For all you do, this buds for you. Your Toyota dealer's picking up a great deal for you. All men get it. He's got sales incentives from Toyota to sell a whole herd of trucks this month, so you can cook up a deal on America's best-selling small trucks. Toyota's prices may never be lower, but act fast to get America's best import selection of long bed, standard beds, 4x4s, even three-quarter tons. Pick up your heels and cook up a deal on Toyota. Toyota. And that's no bum steer. All 61 Builders Emporiums have over 20,000 items per store and plenty of savings during our grand opening sale. Arco Graphite 10W40 Motor Oil is $1.19. Buy five quarts, get a $3 rebate by mail from Arco, and your net cost is 59 cents a quart. Save up to $15 on a 42-inch Charles Wood Student Desk or Entertainment Center. Your choice, only $24.99 each, only till August 30th. At Builders Emporium, we Back in Three River Stadium here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Padres' final trip. There's your book, How to Speak Pittsburghese. Tell them this one we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, we, we mentioned uh, G-Jet, which means have you eaten yet? Downtown Pittsburgh. <laughs> and also, when you go out to eat, you got to understand to order a sandwich. <laughs> and they say a sandwich is two pieces of bread with meat or peanut butter, as in mom's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches sure are good. <laughs> It's a good thing we're perfect in San Diego, I'll tell you <laughs> yeah. that. These people can't talk. Bottom of the four, 3-2 Pirates. Here is Phil Garner in the eighth spot to lead it off. Breaking ball from Dan Boone. Strike call. Garner, Solomon, Moreno. 8-9, leadoff men here in the bottom of the fourth. Been a lot of offense. 8-6 Pirates out hitting the Padres. And 3-2 leading them on the board. Dan Boone, his second consecutive appearance in as many days and as many games. Pitched inning in the second game of the doubleheader yesterday. Trying to break in ball down the line. Could be extra bases. Richards knocked it down. Garner will have two. Garner catches a breaking ball up in the strike zone. Hits it pretty well. Thought for a second Gene might have a chance. He gets close, but no diving on the carpet. First extra base hit for the Pirates. They're ninth overall. Many, many, too many in the bottom of the fourth. We have T-shirt day coming up a week from tonight, August 29th. Five o'clock doubleheader. 10,000 free Padre T-shirts to kids 14 and under. The Cardinals in town a week from tonight. What foul by Solomon. Got an infield single in the second. Oh. 
Trying to move Garner to third and bring on the leadoff man, Omar Moreno. Crowd is uh, semi night night. Not making a whole lot of noise. A little bit tough to butt that one. Ball and a strike. Garner back to second. They have to punt that one off his femur. Good luck. Bernerska could have punted that, <laughs> but nobody else. They try to pick off at second. Garner back in plenty of time. People here in Pittsburgh, to be honest, are more concerned with the Steeler exhibition game tonight. See what they can show against the Dallas Cowboys. 1-1. One, one. Good bunt. Only play to first. Solomon with the sacrifice to move Phil Garner down to third base to bring on the leadoff man, Omar Moreno. Well, Solomon credit here. He lays down a dandy, and Boone gets off the mound. Frank Howard's going to come out and have a little chat. Nobody warming up in the Padre bullpen, so I believe this is more or less a strategy talk. Yes, indeed. People here are upset because the Steelers uh, gave up 31 points in one game, which they won like 35-31. And then the Eagles beat them, the Eagles, excuse me, the Eagles beat them like a drum, beat them by about 16 points, and according to Chuck Knoll, out-hit them on all, every play. So people are kind of considered concerned here as to, will the real Steeler team please stand up? It's exhibition season. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Here's Moreno, the runner a third, one away here in a 3-2 Pirate lead, trying to add one more. Ball one. Wouldn't notice exhibition prices on those tickets, though. No, no. <laughs> no, they're, they're major league in every variety. Good pitch. Dan's best. 101. He is not a power pitcher, but he is a smart one. And as Jerry mentioned before, he is about 60% heart, 30% intestines, as in fortitude. Without power, he has struck out 29 in 37 innings. Not here, though. Run-producing single by Moreno. It is for two Pirates. Moreno, the hottest hitter of the Bucks right now, and he has been doing a lot of damage to the Padres. This is the second time the Bucks have perfectly executed. Back in the first, Moreno single, stole a base, they sacrificed and scored in the sacrifice fly. This time, a double, a sacrifice, and a run-scoring single. And those two runs are the difference in the ballgame. Moreno's 21st RBI of the season to bring on Tim Foley. Two-run lead now for Eddie Solomon, if he can hold it. Foley, a sacrifice in the first. Grounded out to Salazar in third. Ball one to him. Checking with Joe Lonette down at third to see what's cooking. Moreno, as you know, great speed. He stole his 25th, and he's going here and got him off. Got him picked off, and he's out caught stealing. Nicely done by Dan Boone. Moreno guessing all the way. As soon as Boone kicked, he probably figured Boone might be a little leery after having a balk called on him last inning, but Omar was guessing, and he's a pigeon. Score at one, three, six, if you're keeping Book along with us. One ball, no strikes to Foley now, with nobody on and two away, with a run in here on the bottom of the fourth. It's two and nothing as Dan goes behind. Most of the pitchers, Solomon, Wise, and now Boone, have been behind. We have had one strikeout in the entire ball game. That was the called strike on Lafay the top of this inning. Two and one. Foley was trying to hit his only home run of the year on that particular swing. He went down a bit on the bat handle. Had a big swing. Booney took the little off and turned it over a bit. Foley got a piece of air with that swing. Ooh, fooled him there. Two-two. He's a cute pitcher. Get an overswinger up there and he'll drive him nuts. Two. Dave Parker on deck with nobody on and two gone here. A 
run in, an insurance run for Solomon and the Pirates as they lead 4-2 in the third game of a four-game series. And we will televise tomorrow morning, Pacific time. Juan Bonilla. Pirates are gone. Bottom of the fourth. They do get a run. On a double and a single. A couple of base hits. No errors. Nobody left. After four full in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Time to get a sandwich. 4-2 Pirates. And Oz gets himself a single and finally gets one of those bunts to stay fair for him. As Dave has mentioned many times, this is the best bunter the Padres have. Pain you try for the bare hand, the only chance he had, and did not come up with it. But I remind you, junior Padre dates, for those of you who do belong, continue on as the Padres come home after this road trip, which will be the 27th, and then every Saturday and Sunday for the rest of the season, including that weekend series, the 29th, etc., with the Cardinals. Junior Padre dates to see your Padres when they get back home. Bonilla is going to try it also. Pena this time grabs. That was not a sacrifice. Juan was trying to beat it out. Official scorer may give him a sacrifice. We'll wait and see. But it worked for Ozzy. This time Pena comes out. Bare hand play. And Bonilla gone. 2-3. The guideline for the official scorer is that in the official scorer's opinion, the man is bunting for a base hit. The batter is not to be credited with a sacrifice if he's thrown out. Most official scorers ignore that rule and give the guy a sacrifice. We didn't hear the intercom. We'll say no based on the rule, but it probably will be. Here's Gene Richards. 0 for 2 tonight. Scalded one the last time up, but Montañez grabbed it. That's one of the Padre rally as they were trying to get another run on the board back in the second inning. Right at Garner. Ozzy hesitated but goes to third and Richards retired. Gene hit it well again but no luck. Smith at third, two outs. We'll check with Terry after this ball game to see if he is nervous or very aware of his dad's presence since his dad is not only his dad. The gentleman just on the other side of the man with the hat. That's Bob Kennedy. But he knows baseball, and that puts more pressure on him. Dave Parker will corral this one. And Solomon gets out of it. No runs a hit. Ozzie left the board, and we go to the bottom of the fifth for two bucks. And an earring. One strike. See, this is a great matchup because Dave is such a, a big swinger and a big person. And Boone will give him that stuff, change up, come inside, outside. Should be a great matchup. Parker's forearms look bigger than Boone's waist. They are. Would you like to have your head squeezed in a vice for him? Put some distance to it. Richard! Let's get there. Parker is going to try for three and make it in. Parker says, yeah, look, you're cheering now and you boo before. The second triple of the year. Gene Richards gave it a long chase. He went up with the wrong hand. Rupert tries to drag it down, run it down. Parker is heavier than he was, but he can still motor, bad knees and all, easily as the triple. Catch that expression on his face, looking up at the fans. One ball and no strikes. Got the third base and looked up at the cheers and said, sure, now you cheer. They booed him yesterday every time he made it out. Of course, they cheered him on his three-run homer off uh, Murray in the first ball game, first inning. Two and nothing on Madlock. Bill one for two tonight. Pirates lead by two. Pretty good chance to go ahead by more. Padre infield in to cut it off. Richards gets there, but the Pirates will have their second sacrifice fly tonight, and they lead five to two. Bill Madlock knocks in his 27th. 
But mind you, when the Padres come home on the 27th, as mentioned before, for Junior Padre, it will also be Senior Padre, Senior Citizen Dates, every Sunday afternoon, plus the Thursday game, the business person special remaining on September 3rd. So the Senior Padres have a chance every Sunday through the remainder of the season, beginning with the next homestand and the Thursday afternoon game on September 3rd, which, of course, also falls within the next homestand. That'll be against this ball club, Pittsburgh Pirates, 1 o'clock, Thursday afternoon, the 3rd. A strike on Eastler. Well, if the Pirates continue in this one, I can just about imagine what Chuck Tanner's sports are going to be tomorrow. We're starting to execute. And indeed, they are. Two strikes on Eastler. They get them on, get them over, and get them in. Pirates really have too much talent in this club to be where they are. They're 30 and 30 for the season. And albeit aging somewhat, they still have some quality performers. One and two, Mike Eastler. Booney gets a strikeout. First run, Danny's chalked up tonight. Two gone in the Pirate fifth. And the hitter is Tony Pena. Some finals in the National. You see Cincinnati leading the Mets after four. Dodgers in St. Louis later. San Francisco beat the Cubs 2-1. Dodgers not too, playing too bad here in the second half. Jack Clark's finally getting on track. Hit another home run today. Payne, your first pitch swinging, and who's got it? Mr. Benilla says he'll handle the chore. He does. The Bucks get a run on a hit. We're through five in three rivers. 5-2 Pittsburgh. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend. Good eating style. The special of the week for gourmet's delight. Here's how to add a little weekend flavor to any dish. Serve with generous portions of Michelob. Because that smooth and mellow taste helps make any time feel a little like a weekend. Put a little weekend in your week. Yeah. Is the Energizer just another battery? Is an atomic sub just another boat? The Energizer from EverReady Technology. Of all leading brands, nothing outlasts, nothing outperforms the Energizer. EverReady scientists made sure. Your game, flashlight, recorder, they'll tell you. Energize me. The Energizer. Energize. For life. Long life. Halligan's creates culinary masterpieces from the sea. Where else can you find a menu with their variety and combinations? Halligan's, Halligan. next to the ocean at the end of Grand Pacific Beach. We're turning back rates to 12% with 12 months to pay at Center City Ford. Center City Ford, it's Ford City. Some of the best people in their fields are working for the Navy. It's working for America. Padres better get the offense cooking. They trail by three as we go to the six. And you look at Paul Parrott. I believe that's his name. The mascot of the Bucks. Eddie Solomon has allowed only a bunt single to Ozzie Smith in the last three innings. And like Ted, I didn't really expect Mr. Solomon to be around this long. He had a rocky second inning when the Padres touched him up for five hits. Jones, Bass, and Salazar. Padre trio here in the sixth inning to see if they can do something about getting back in this one. Padres led two to one, but Rick Wise was chasing the third inning. And the Pirates have added single markers in the fourth and fifth off Danny Boone. One strike on Rupert Jones. I mentioned either side was able to take uh, batting practice because of a camera day promotion that allowed the fans to roam on the field behind barriers and take pictures and get autographs. Omar Moreno places this one. And there's one out in the San Diego sixth inning. So a group of the uh, Padres stayed at the hotel instead of coming over two and a half hours before game time as is normal. Came over an uh, 
hour and 15 before. Another group was invited by the Pirates to take part in the camera day and sign autographs and take pictures, and quite a group of the Padres were involved in that. But no BP. Hadn't stopped him hitting. <laughs> 11 for the Pirates and 7 for the Padres. Bass has one of the Padre hits, that bad hop triple over Parker's head. Bounced into a double play his last trip. Randy off the plate tonight, and I think he's got to do that. Just low, says the home plate umpire Jerry Dale. Two and nothing on Bass. Randy was really crowding the plate last night, and the Pirates were jamming him all night. He's still pretty close, but not as close as he was last evening. Three balls and no strikes. Padres' hottest hitter in the on-deck circle, Luis Salazar. Three and one. Solomon's walked him in, allowed seven base hits. Playing deep was Mike Eastler. He moves to the edge of the warning track and makes the catch. Pretty good work by Randy, but not quite enough to get it out of here. We'll be back with you tomorrow, 10.30. Start on TV8. Chris Welsh and Rod Scurry, a couple of left-handers, will be the pitchers. Louis Tion, I would have loved to see him pitch. Uh, he had a bit of a tight shoulder, and the Bucks set him back a couple of days. He is really a treat. One ball on Salazar. I mentioned the pregame show tomorrow morning at 10.15 Pacific Time. And I mentioned Montreal beat Atlanta 5-4. Bonson was the winner. Reardon got a save. One and one on Luis. Got any early line favorites for your pregame guest tomorrow? Not really. Hadn't uh, given it consideration yet. Takes a lot of, you know, hours of thought, meetings, votes. One and two. I know who has the final say, though. Uncle Teddy. You got it. Sure. It's your show, isn't it? Well, yeah. That's the thing. Last year was the Randy Jones show. He picked all the guests. And he never picked Winfield. And Winfield... Got mad at you. Got mad at me. And one of the reasons he never talks to me now, he thinks I kept him off the pregame show. Now he can buy his own watch. Padres go in order. Six inning. To the bottom half, Pittsburgh five. And San Diego two. Itching, burning, athlete's foot. It can be caused by not just one, not just two, but three major types of fungus. Get Desinex, now in a totally unique penetrating antifungal foam. It helps destroy all three types of athlete's foot fungus as it penetrates every crack and crevice. You've never used anything like it before. Penetrating antifungal foam, only from Desinex, destroys all three types of athlete's foot fungus. This is a revolutionary charcoal. You just pour and light. You don't need lighter fluid ever. Match light. Look again. Match light lights fast and easy. You don't add a single drop of lighter fluid. Match light from Kingsford. It's the pour and light charcoal because you don't need lighter fluid ever. Do you know why Canada Dry Club Soda is my favorite sparkling water? It's very simple. Taste. But how does Canada Dry achieve this particular sparkling taste? The answer is crystal clear. The water. The purer the water, the more sparkling the taste. And nothing sparkles better than Canada Dry. Canada Dry Club Soda is America's number one sparkling water. But Martin, yes. That's one to bass. Boone will have to cover, and the Padres hook up and execute that fundamental play. Well, one gone. Time for the answer to the question of the game, and it's brought to you by Food Basket. Today's question, who pitched Hank Aaron's 715th home run, and what team did he play for? Al Downing of the Dodgers, 1974. 
seems like only yesterday. I remember I saw it on TV delayed three hours by the local TV station. It wasn't TV8. Salazar, does he have room? Nope. Well, will they accuse the parrot of interference? <laughs> you big dummy, get out of here! Uh, the, what has the chicken rot? Did you see the article in one of the newspapers about the chicken? We've been quoting like a quarter of a million bananas. They got him at half with projections for one mil next year based on advanced bookings. LaFay. Nice thing about it is he doesn't even have to go to New York to get that kind of money. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Okay. Chicken would not last long on the streets of New York. One plucked chicken. Two out, six inning. Solomon uh, sacrificed and beaten out an infield hit. One strike. <laughs> Solomon said, what? Look at Boone. Booney's laughing. That was one of the worst swings I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still laughing. He's still laughing. <laughs> I would bet Solomon might be laughing, too. <laughs> well, that brings back some memories. <laughs> That's the way I used to attack Jim Brewer's screwball. <laughs> Instant replay. That's even better. Dave Bach is going to have to put that one in the highlight film. We're through six innings in Pittsburgh. It's five to two, the Pirates. <laughs> Joe LaFay, a lead double. He's two for three tonight. And Jerry Turner comes on as a pinch hitter. Turner hitting 174, a homer, and two RBIs. Garner. LaFay moves to third. Turner out four to three. Padre baseball brought to you in part by Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob. Put a little weekend in your week. Ozzie Smith will try to get LaFay in from third. Ozzie has a couple of hits and three tries, a good bunt, and an RBI single back in the second inning. Former Pirate John Milner hit his first home run as the Montreal Expos beat Atlanta 5-4 in the first of a doubleheader. One ball and no strikes on Ozzie. Pirate bullpen goes to work. Left-hander number 23 is Grant Jackson, Enrique Romo, the right-hander. This will not be deep enough to score anybody. Foley makes the play. How's he not too selective? That was not a good pitch to go after. Willie Montanez showing a little false hustle, coming all the way across the diamond to cover third base. When you have a man on third, you're supposed to try and get a ball up in the strike zone, and that thing is not even a strike. Ozzy reaching. Give credit to Solomon, and Ozzy will have to learn from that experience. Juan Bonilla, a single, a walk, and tried to make his way aboard via the bunt route last time, and Pena, the catcher, threw him out. Padres would dearly love to get at least one here. LaFay opened with a double. One and nothing. First time Bonilla has hit second this year against a right-handed pitcher. 
a couple of times Frank Howard has moved Benia up in the lineup against the lefties. I believe Benia is going to be hitting a little higher in the lineup because he's been an aggressive hitter all year for this club. He went around. It's one and one. Padres back home against the St. Louis Cardinals beginning Thursday night. It's going to be a family bargain night. All ticket prices slashed in half and general admission sold on the day of the game. Just a buck. I hope you come out. Two balls and one strike. Solomon doing pretty good work on Bonilla. Fed him a couple of outside sliders and then tried to bring the fastball back in at the belt. Reds and Mets 1-1 six inning. And the Dodgers score two in the first. They lead the Cardinals 2-0. Valenzuela against Ford. Bonilla singles and Solomon hits the deck. 4 1 Bonilla continues to sparkle. RBI single and it's a 5 3 ball game. Second time the Padres have knocked in a run with two outs with a clutch hit. Ozzie did it first and then Bonilla hits a slider and Solomon falls off the mound. Harvey Haddix, the pitching coach, is going to come out and have a chat with Solomon. Haddix does not make the changes usually unless something's wrong with Solomon. We gave you the National League scores. Let's look at the American. Detroit won its eighth in a row by beating Texas 2-0. Petrie beat Honeycutt. The Yankees got a shutout from Rick Russell. 5-0 over Kansas City. Bucky Dent with his seventh home run of the year. Another look at the Buck bullpen on the third base side. Britt Byrne shut out Toronto as the White Sox won 8-0. Greg Lezinski and Chet Lemon had home runs for the White Sox. Lezinski his 12th. Oakland beat Baltimore 2 to nothing. A five hitter for Rick Langford. Scott McGregor lost to Tony Armas. Hit home run number 16. No report yet. Minnesota and Milwaukee. Cleveland and California. Boston and Seattle. Jerry, when you see Harvey Haddix, as we just did, well, he has a place in baseball history. I don't know if anybody will ever do that. 12 perfect innings. And he lost the game in the 13th. 59. Richards, stay fair, ball. Foul. Boy, I'll tell you, Gene's had a tough break. The first time up, he hit a rocket into the waiting glove of Dave Parker. Second time up, a bullet into the waiting glove of Willie Montanez this time. A little bit foul. Look at that. Out in front of it. Solomon has not had good stuff all night tonight, and the Padres simply have not been able to put him away. This is about three feet foul. Hits that screen just in foul territory. Padres have nine hits, the Pirates 11. Gene's got a 264 batting average. It should be about 294. He has hit the ball well enough to have a very good year. He has not hit in good luck, really. One and one. Solomon struggling. He struggled early, settled down through the middle innings, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, only allowing two base runners. But he is laboring visibly here in the seventh. Chuck, I think, is just hoping for that last out. Another base hit may get him out of the game. Bonilla, only one stolen base. Not too much of a threat to go. Right at Foley. We'll take the force. That'll do it for the Padres in the seventh. They get a run, a couple of base hits. And they leave one. We move to the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Pirates lead a 5 3. John, a win in four losses, earned run average 5.53, not one of his better years in the major leagues. He has thrown fairly well lately. Grant Jackson continues to work in the Pirate bullpen. I would think that's going to be indicative of the fact that he'll be coming on the pitch. Solomon started to tire. And the Padres go with Kennedy Jones and Bass, three left-handed hitters, to begin the eighth inning. Bottom of the seventh inning, five to three. A little disappointed, Dave. You know, uh, Louis Tion was scheduled to pitch tomorrow. He's been scratched in favor of Rod Scurry because of a tight shoulder. I was kind of anxious to look at that old codger out there, see how he's doing. Moreno has continued to plug the Padres in the series. He's two for three with an RBI and a run scored. One ball and no strikes. Moreno has scored five runs in the series. One and one. John Curtis. 
Boston Red Sox, St. Louis Cardinals, Giants, and Padres. Curtis will have to hurry and gets it there in time. Good work by John and Randy Bass on the top on the low throw. I was kidding John in the pregame show on radio today as we watched this play by Curtis. He does a good job, as Dave said. He gets over to the line and he throws out one of the toughest men in baseball. Makes a good pivot. Throws it right on the money. A little low, but it was there. Curtis was talking about the middle relief. One ball and ten pole. And I said, well, there are two people who know you're doing it. The manager and you and nobody else. When you're in middle relief, you really go unnoticed. Two balls and no strikes. It's not a bad place to pitch if you have a strong offensive team because you'll come into a game trailing maybe four or five to two, but if your team can bounce back, you're going to win some game. Foley gets a base hit. 12th one for the Pirates tonight. Generally, that man in middle relief, say from the fourth through the sixth inning, he'll come in and he'll pitch just enough so that when he gets up, a pinch hitter comes in to do the hitting and you never hear from him again. Uh, you get no record, you don't win, you don't lose, you're just there. It is rather uh, an invisible spot on the pitching staff. Parker's had a good evening. A couple of hits, sacrifice fly, he's scored twice and knocked in one. You know, I, I noticed this earlier in the game, but the tape on the hands. I'm wondering if that's to line them up or just what? There's me, Mr. Five. No balls and a strike. tug his ear so he won't lose that diamond. That is a very fancy earring. Ted and I were talking about it. Neither of us are going to ask him why we're, we're going to let you do it. And you may miss the next broadcast. Don't hold your breath. Fastball in the glove of Terry Kennedy when Parker started that swing. John cut loose with some mustard. suppose I'll be the first nor the last to say that Parker's carrying about 10 to 15 pounds more than he should. He is really at the max. He should be down a little bit, and I think it might affect the swinging. He's a little tight in the shoulders. Kennedy couldn't find it, but Foley couldn't either. Terry caught that one in the spot you don't like to. If he did, it can be very painful, as you know, David. You know, there's nothing really that looks more helpless than a catcher who can't find a ball with that mask on. He's running around. It's right there under his feet. And there's his dad, not the guy with the hat on. It's Bertie Tebbets, one of the most, well, the orniest of all catchers. <laughs> he fought for Detroit and Boston, a great guy. But, man, was he ornery when he was a catcher. Really ornery guy. But his father was right next to him, a gray-haired man who... Um, did a lot of outfielding for Cleveland and the White Sox. Was a general manager for the uh, Chicago Cubs. And last year in the big shakeup, uh, left. He still works for the Cubs, though. Dick Dent, not just a little TV time, the Padre trainer. Not much a trainer can do out there except to go out and console him and just stand by in case you need the smelling salts. Best thing is to hold his hand. <laughs> <laughs> two balls and two strikes on Parker. Broken bat, Bonilla gets one. They caught him out, said Ozzy was in the act of throwing. He didn't really have a shot at Parker anyway. Ozzy got the ball in his bare hand and then lost it. 
Let's watch it. Now, you've got to have the ball in your hand. And although it's lightning fast, Ozzie had taken the ball out of his glove, had it in his hand, and then lost it. Another little thing that Foley does, does the screen. There it is. See that? In the hand, it was out of the glove and into his hand, and he just didn't have hold of it, and the ball went flying. Foley can do more things to upset the apple cart with a little possible advantage. He'll get it. One strike on Madline. He noticed on the steal by Moreno back in the first one that popped out of Terry's glove. He held the bat right in his eye. eye. Mm -hmm. Bill Garner told us on the post-game show last night that Foley thinks the second base area is his and will step on anybody that comes into it. Two Called strikes. him a kamikaze player, did he? Yes. He said, says, I got a little more class than that. He said, you know, I'm tough, but Foley's a kamikaze. Scores 5-3. We're in the bottom of the seventh. This one gets away from Kennedy, and Parker will go to second. Wild pitch will be charged to Curtis as the ball was in the dirt. That's been one of the real uh, sore spots with John Curtis, the breaking ball. He'll bounce uh, half a dozen of them in front of the plug. Here's another one. Look at that. Now, that's what we call the 58-foot curveball. It's in the dirt, you know. It doesn't get to the plate. It's almost impossible for a catcher to do anything with that ball. The ball went over the white line into the pirate dugout, became dead, and Parker got the one base as far as second. One ball and two strikes on Bill Madlock. Hitting 331. That's the tops in the National League. The wild pitch, a costly wild pitch. Here's Madlock, just found the hole up the middle. Didn't hit it too good, but got it in the right spot. But that face hit following the wild pitch, and the Bucks get the run back. They lead by three. The Padres have two at-bats to try to overcome it. Brandy Bass wisely cut that ball off as Parker was already in. Mike Eastler, a hit, an RBI, and three trips tonight. 13 hits for the Pirates against three Padre pitchers. consistently his changeup was working and his fastball was working he was an outstanding pitcher and he's having trouble with location that's yep. the curveball I'm talking about Dave that big one that was in a good spot breaking straight down there's nothing in two runner goes Kennedy has a shot got him Boy, Ozzy really steals a lot of plays with those quick tags. Kennedy gets them. Play goes two to six, and Madlock cut away. Pirates get a run. A couple of base hits, and nobody left. We go to the eighth. Padres have two shots left, and they trail six three. The pitcher, left-hander Grant Jackson. Third time he's appeared in the series in as many games. Looks like that tummy is starting to go over the belt buckle, but still a fine relief pitcher. Got the save in game one last night. Had a chance for the save in the nightcap, but ran out of steam. Kent Tacovi came in and notched it. Jackson brought in here as three left-handed batters coming up. Our perch up here on the fourth level at Three River Stadium. As Red Barber would say, the old uh, Brooklyn broadcaster, high above Dodger Stadium in the catbird seat. Indeed. Terry, a walk, a hit, and a fly out. And he will be using an ice pack after tonight's game. Jammed, and Madlock's going to make the play. Terry got sawed off as Jackson hit him right on the fifth. One pitch, one out, eight, and Jerry, I'm sorry, it's all yours. For a complete report on the day's news, plus the latest on sports and weather, watch News 8 today at 6.30 and 11 on Channel 8. That's okay. I don't mind taking a little time off. We got one away. 
And we got one out. Kennedy pops up. Here's Rupert Jones going on against Grant Jackson. I was going to say Jackson will be 39 next month. He is not a young man. His arm has been outstanding. What do you mean, not a young man? Well, I know that you're bordering on somewhere in the area of 39. A 1-0 pitch. Easler isn't going to get it. How'd you like to be playing out there at age 39? Now stop and think of that. That's old for baseball, or any sport for that matter. Look at Muhammad Ali. Saw him today. He says he wants to make another comeback. 40 pounds overweight. Sad. One ball, one strike, one away. Outfield dead straight away. Infield pulled to the right. Jackson, pretty good stuff. Is in on Jones twice. I think it makes Jackson so deceptive is he has such a fluid, easy motion. And that fastball, maybe around 86, 87 miles an hour, really jumps in on the hitters because they see that graceful motion and then all of a sudden the ball's right there. Pretty good way of hiding the ball. Watch how that front glove comes out to hide the ball well. Ball and two strikes. Jackson began his pro career back in 1962. This is his 20th year as a professional. Got to the big leagues in 65 with Philadelphia. Long time ago. One ball, two strikes. One out. Nobody on. 6-3 Pittsburgh leading. And Rupert turned on one and gets himself a base hit. So Jones gets his first base hit of the evening. Ground ball single to right field. The first hit off Grant Jackson. The tenth for the Padres. Well, the look, as Rupert not only gets his first hit of the evening, but the first of the series, he's hit the ball well in this series and finally finds a hole. Garner can't catch up. And Rupert... Notches base hit number 10 for the Padres. 23 hits at Three River Stadium tonight, both sides. Randy Bass tripled and scored in the second, hit into a double play, although he hit the ball sharply in the third, and then fly to left field in the sixth. Padres need runs, and here's a guy that can put two on the board quickly. Ball won the count. Eighth inning, 6-3 Pittsburgh. Fastball in, and Bass went after a pitch that might not have been a strike. Randy is right on top of that plate. We've discussed this before. Those pitchers with good stuff are going to go after him inside if they can. He's right up there on the plate. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Curveball, a ball and two strikes. A couple of right-handers down in the Pittsburgh bullpen. We certainly can identify one of them from a long distance to Colby. Pick him up. I think Perez is the other, if I'm not mistaken. There's the youngster on the right. is Perez and to Colby on the left. Montanez runs Bass out and down to second base in scoring position goes Rupert Jones. And this is a run the Padres really would like to pick up. They go into the ninth inning trailing by three. They got a problem. Good play by Montanez. He knows that he could let the ball go foul and make Randy come back up to the plate. But the Bucks now, all they need are four outs to win this game and he'll trade an out for a man getting into scoring position. Good work by Willie. Willie Montanez. Very pleasant man. He's a hustler. Bear down. A little on the hot dog side, but if you understand the kind of a guy he is, he will not bother you. If you don't like that kind of play, he'll lift such a continually. Two down, eighth inning. Rupert Jones at second. Here's Luis Salazar, the Padres' hottest hitter in this series. Slow curveball. Ball on the count. Louis batting at 299. One tick under 300. Got five hits in yesterday's doubleheader. 1-0 pitch. Slow curveball, and he tried to get the fastball on the inside part of the plate. Two balls, no strikes. Joe LaFay is the man behind Salazar. He may not hit. Two balls, one strike. John Urea throwing in the Padre bullpen. In the Pittsburgh bullpen, Kent DeColvey, Pasquale Perez. Maybe the fans will get a chance to see how still Louis Salazar is keeping his head now. He's not bobbing up and down, thus he is seeing the ball a lot better, and he is hitting it much better. Two balls, one strike, two down. 6-3 Pittsburgh. We're in the eighth inning. Runner at second. Hard curveball inside, three and one.
a 3-1 pitch coming up. Hard shot, left field. The ball is foul. Wow. Manager Frank Howard has somewhat of a dilemma on his hands. If he sends up a right-hander for Joe LaFay, they could bring a right-hander from the bullpen, Kent DeColby. Then he'd have to lose another man at the plate, never having used him. To come up with a left-hand batter, which could be Marino. He could send him up. He could turn either way. If he doesn't send up a pinch hitter for LaFay, then Grant Jackson will go after him. He'll have the edge. Three balls, two strikes, two down. Six three, Bucks leading at second base, Rupert Jones. Balazar has hit the ball hard in this series continually. Low curve and down to first base goes Louie, and the tying run's gonna head the home plate. Let's see how manager Frank Howard handles this. Joe LaFay is being pulled out, and we'll see who comes on to hit for Joe. A walk to Louis Salazar at second base, Jones. Salazar at first. And Dave Edwards is coming out to do the hitting. Edwards had a pinch hit to RBI yesterday. That came in the eighth inning to give the Padres their second run. So Edwards will bat for LaFay, and let's see if uh, manager Chuck Tanner counters with one of his right-handers, Kent DeColvey or Pasquale Perez. If that takes place, and manager Frank Howard could go with Broderick Perkins or Jose Marino. Here comes Tanner. Have a chat anyway. I don't think that that kind of a stroll out there is a stroll that's going to get his uh, pitcher out of the game, at least not at the moment. Edwards represents the tying run. Bucks lead at six to three. Last night, Edwards delivered a single off Jackson, a uh, pinch single, and knocked Grant out of the ball game. Jackson was in danger of being lifted. He may have thought twice about that pitch he threw Salazar. He had Louis fooled on the three-two slow curve. But he missed and he walked him, and with a three-run lead, you really didn't want to see the tying run come to the plate with your Grant Jackson, Chuck Tanner, or anybody connected with the Pirates. Padres trying to scratch back. We're in the eighth inning, 6-3, Pittsburgh leading it. Rupert Jones at second base. At first base, Luis Salazar. And here's Dave Edwards to try to keep things rolling. He's batting at 164. Inside. Ball on the count. Padres have not had a comeback or in some time. They just love to come up with about four runs now and walk away with it. The 1-0 pitch, Edwards, inside 2-0. And Jackson's being a little bit too fine, David. I think he's trying to go for those corners, not trying to give anything good to Edwards. He's falling behind dangerously. Tying run at first base. I mean at the plate. At second base, Jones, Salazar at first, and the tying run at the plate in the person of Dave Edwards. Got the corner. Two balls, one strike. Good pitch by Jackson. 2-0. and oh, He knew Edwards was cranked up to try to jerk one out of here, and he nailed the outside corner. When you pitch for 20 years as a pro and you're 39 years old, you learn a few things, and Jackson knows that this man right here could be a devastating hitter to him if he doesn't watch it. Two balls and a strike to Edwards. Inside, three and one. A Jackson in danger of walking a full. Six three Pittsburgh. Jones at second. Salazar at first. Edwards trying to get on. Outside, the bases are loaded. The Padres scratching back here in the top of the eighth inning. John Curtis, the scheduled hitter, is being called back. And here comes Jose Marino. And in this case, whatever manager Chuck Tanner does, Marino can just turn around, although a better hitter left-handed. Well, a good move by Frank Howard to bring Marino on here because it does not make an automatic move for Chuck Tanner. He now has to think about it. Personally, I would rather see Marino facing Grant Jackson, even though he may be a little better hitter left-handed than going against Tacovey, who's got that sinker ball and been throwing well. That's John Urea, who will come on to pitch the bottom of the eighth inning for San Diego. Marino comes on to bat for Curtis. Jose brought up from Hawaii, where he was batting at a 3.05 clip, and that's all for Grant Jackson. His manager, Chuck Tanner, comes out of the buck dugout for the second time. That's an automatic removal. 
Now Tanner's going to go with his hot man. Tecovi in the last 23 innings he's pitched has only allowed two runs. And Jackson for the second night in a row fails. He did pick up the save in the first game, but hasn't been able to get out of an inning that he started in the last two ball games. We would certainly guess it's going to be Tecovi. He and Pasquale Perez, but Tecovi looks like he has the jacket and will be the guy. Don't really have any further updates on scores, but for San Diego. Perkins, a good pinch hitter, waiting. There's the pitch. Outside, Colby missing. Candy has a record of 4-3, and three, an ERA of 2.75. At third base, Rupert Jones. Luis Salazar at second. At first base, Dave Edwards. Padres trying to scratch back. They're trailing by three, eighth inning. Outside, to Colby misses badly on two pitches. Perkins is batting at 301 overall, and as a pinch hitter is two for five with a couple of RBIs. Big part of the ball game. Padres threatening here in the eighth inning, trying to come back. A 2-0 pitch. Two balls and a strike. Article on Sakovi in the local papers today talked about how he really feels he has to be tired to pitch well. Said he was a little worried. He got all that strength back during the strike. Said he threw 15 to 20 minutes a day for 10 days during the workouts. And if he doesn't think Chuck Tanner's going to use him, he'll throw some in the bullpen. He says he likes to have a tired feeling in his arm. He says he doesn't feel all that well, but it makes him pitch better. It's that sinker dipping a lot better than it normally would. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Perkins. Hard ground ball. Well guard on the right center field. That could lead the bases. Here comes Edwards. There's going to be a play, but Edwards is going to beat it, and the Padres have tied it up. Oh, man, oh, man. Bill Garner let one get through him, and it cost the Pittsburgh Pirates three runs. It's all even at six. This ball should have been stopped. Perkins hits it hard. Uh, my first inclination was the ball took kind of a crazy hop over Garner's glove. Let's take a look. Garner gets there, has the glove down. Can't really tell, but on the AstroTurf, the ball will roll forever. By the time Parker polices it up, Dave Edwards, who has great straightaway speed, makes it in, and we're tied at six. A double for Perkins ties it up at six, and that takes Ed Solomon out of the ball game. It takes Rick Wise off the hook, and the game now belongs to John Curtis and Kent DeColvey as Ozzie Smith steps in. Padres with a chance to win it. There's an attempt to at pick off at second. Back goes Perkins. Broderick Perkins, three for six as a pinch hitter with five RBIs. Man, did he do it then. He found the hole, got into the alley in right center field. When the ball got by Garner, that's all she wrote. All those runs charged to Grant Jackson. No balls and a strike. Ozzy drove in a run. In the, uh, let's see, that was in the first inning, second inning rather, with a line single to right field. Quick handoff. Buckos all tied at six. Very looking at Perkins at second base. He represents a go ahead run. We're in the top of the eighth inning. One ball, one strike. One and one the count. Pirates played a game tonight where they did everything well execution-wise until the eighth inning when Grant Jackson walked a couple of men with a three-run lead, and he will have to pay for that. Gets charged with three earned runs in two-thirds of an inning. Perkins in to score. Ozzie Smith is going to get the third as the ball gets away from Parker. The Wiz heading for third base, and the Padres have taken a 7-6 lead in the eighth inning, and they keep rolling. Buck fans, not too thrilled, and I'm going to have to give my partner a little bit of a reward for his clairvoyance. He looked over at me when the Padres got three on. He says silently they're going to score four runs. They just have scored four runs. They take the lead seven to six. This ball hits very weirdly and bounces completely away from where Parker thought he was going to get it. 
Padres have taken a one-run lead, seven to six. And here comes a man who's hit in the clutch all year long, Juan Bonilla. Two for two tonight, a walk, a sacrifice, and two singles. The last time up, he drilled a single to center field to drive in a run. 7-6 San Diego as Bonilla takes high. The Padres scratching back. This ball game now belongs to Tecolvi and John Curtis. Bonilla batting at 293. Look at that close stance. Boy, he's in. He's into the game. Watch him go after it. That's a tough pitch to handle inside, David, when you're going at the pitch. Well, Bonilla's style is to stand a little bit off the plate and then try to protect the outside edge. So once in a while, you're going to get tied up with that sinker inside. Padre seven runs, 12 hits. Pittsburgh six runs and 13 hits. Padre would love to grab this one. They have been in a tough period right now, not getting many hits and they're not getting many runs. There's Madlock. And he is out of there. But not before the Padres send up eight men. They pick up four runs on three base hits. The big blows, the double by Perkins and the triple by Ozzie Smith. After seven and a half, San Diego seven, Pittsburgh six. Six lead, we go to the last half of the eighth inning as John Urea comes on to pick up the pitching for John Curtis. Urea with a record of two and one, an ERA microscopic at 0.53 appearing in his 26th game, has one save, would like to make it two. And there you see Wilbur Stargell in a jacket next to Phil Garner, Garner number three, Stargell. The veteran on this ball club has been with the Pirates for 20 years. Mike Easler, one for three. Strike one the count. Urea got that one right in there. Easler batting at 308. Both bullpens are going. Gary Lucas in the Padre bullpen and Enrique Romo, a right-hander in the Pittsburgh bullpen. The one strike pitch. Strike two. Urea's save came on this road trip. The Padres only win in St. Louis against his former teammates. He would love to chalk up number two this evening. John has been pitching outstanding. And here's Easler trying to upset the apple cart. Got him. Just blew it by him. Three in a row. And Easler sits down. One away. Great location on the breaking ball by Urea. 0-2. Sees if he can get Easler to chase something out of the strike zone. He does. A breaking ball. That thing dip. Boy, that thing dropped six inches. John Urea, red hot right now, will go after the right hand hitting Tony Pena to catch it. Bottom of the eighth inning, Padres with a four run uprising have taken the lead seven to six. Ball one inside, very close. Urea is a very phlegmatic guy, hardly shows any emotion whatsoever under any set of circumstances. The 1-0 pitch. Half swing, they call it a strike. Pena batting at 327, a couple of home runs and 12 RBIs. A rookie catcher. Defensively, he is outstanding, and he's done it with the bat this year, although he's been spotted. Manager Chuck Tanner has put him in the spot where he can do the most good, but I think from now on, he is going to be in there all the way. They're just going to let him go all right down to the wire. The 1-1 pitch. Two balls, one strike. Dow T-shirt night, Saturday, August the 29th with the St. Louis Cardinals in town. It'll be a twi-night doubleheader. First game starting at 5 p.m. Join us at the big ballpark. 2-1 pitch. Dave Edwards has that easily. Two down. Willie Montanez. Willie, single, bounced the first twice. One for three. One for seven since coming over from Montreal, batting at 174 overall this year. Well, he's a little thick at the girth, though. He hasn't played much. Probably a lot of those good French tarts up there. One oh pitch. Two balls, no strikes. <laughs> what a sequence that was. 
Yanavlo pops himself on the hip. 2-0 pitch. He found the right spot for a base hit. Drops a single into right center field. Manager Chuck Tanner may go for a pinch runner for Montanez. It was not too fast. Let's see how this develops. Urea makes a pretty good pitch. He gets in on Montanez's hands, but Willie has that good strength. And we saw him do a lot of that in San Diego last year. He's a dangerous man. Keeps that bat in the level plane. As we watch Willie do his thing coming around first base. So Montanez will stay in the ball game and he'll do the running. Here's Phil Garner. Garner two for three. A single and a double. Strike one. Interesting man now comes into focus on that pirate bench. Willie Stargell. He's available to pinch yet. We just saw him earlier. But Gary Lucas, if Chuck Tanner should bring on Stargell, would probably come on to pitch. One strike pitch to Garner, strike two. Jason Thompson has been called forth to do some swinging in the event that Kent DeCulver gets up there. Enrico Romo throwing hard on the bullpen for Pittsburgh. Thompson delivered a pinch double last night off the left field wall. One ball, two strikes. Montanez short lead at first. Outside. Two balls, two strikes. You know, you mentioned Stargell. He had his leg in a cast. I really think that's a decoy. I don't think he's ready to play. I don't know this for a fact, but uh, I think they just want him there to let you think he's available. 2-2 two -two pitch. On the ground. Benilla has him at first base, and that closes out Pittsburgh in the eighth inning. No runs, a base hit, one man left. After eight full innings of play, Padre seven, buck six. Where they trailed six to one, they came back and tied it only to lose it. But they've come from a long ways back in this one. Garner had a little trouble finding the handle on that, but got it over there in time to get Richards. The play goes four to three. One away, ninth inning. Here's Terry Kennedy. Kennedy singled, walked, flied the right into center field. He is one for three. Three for nine in the series, an average of 300 on the button. Terry has been a 300 for a month. Boy, he's just been stroking that ball. He's not uh, running out of sight, but he keeps getting his hits when he has to. Look at that. Couldn't hit it any better. Terry at first base with a line single to right. Padres would love a little insurance there, and there is his dad, Bob, bending over there, intently watching his son. I'll tell you, that can be quite a thrill if your son's in the big league following you. Bob had a long big league career covering at least 15 years, I recall. That's as much bat speed as I've seen Kennedy generate this season. He just unloaded. His eyes got big when Tecovey got that sinker up, and he really whistled the bat through the zone. Rupert Jones, one for four tonight. Singled and scored in the eighth inning when the Padres picked up four runs to go ahead. Rupert batting at 247, two homers, 20 RBIs. He's got some punch. He can reach the seats here if he gets a hold of it. Needless to add, with the lumber company of the Pirates, uh, an insurance runner, too, would look mighty fine here. In the ninth inning for Pittsburgh, let's see, it'll be a pinch hitter for Tecolby, and then the top of the order, Marino, Foley, Parker, Madlock, and so on. Strike. One ball, one strike. One and one the count. Based on what the Pirates have done here in this series, the second batter in the inning might be the key man, Moreno. The Padres got to stop him from getting on base. He scored five runs in three games. Tonight is two for four. He has four. He'll make that five for nine overall. On the ground. Garner, Foley. They got him. So the double play closes it out for the Padres in the ninth inning. We go to the last half of the ninth. San Diego leading Pittsburgh, 7-6. to six. Thompson, and he'll be batting for Kent DeColby. We go to the last half of the ninth inning. The Padres lead it 7-6. to six. Padres losing a doubleheader last night. 
And now manager Frank Howard, after Jason Thompson was announced, he went right out there and he waved to the bullpen to bring in Gary Lucas because Thompson's a left-hand batter, Marino's a left-hand batter, Foley will not hit a home run, Parker's left-handed. So John Urea will not get his save after all. Here comes Gary Lucas with a chance to get a save. Jason Thompson was announced for Kent to Colby. Let's see if he stays in the ball game. It might be that Chuck Tanner will go for a right-hand hitter. Bill Robinson is sitting on the bench, and that may be just the way Tanner will do it. Oh, man, the wheels are turning tonight, gang, as Howard goes out to get Urea. And now it's Lee Lacey coming out. Lacey will bat for Jason Thompson. So Urea leaves after pitching one good inning, giving up a hit and no runs. Struck out one and walked none. And now here comes Gary Lucas as manager Frank Howard pulling out all the stops, going to his best man in late innings for the bullpen. Here's Gary Lucas coming on. Lucas with a record of 3-6, and six, an ERA of 2.33, appearing in his 37th game. He's got 10 saves, and that is exactly eight more than anybody else. John Littlefield has a couple. Danny Boone has one. Urea has one. That's about it. Gary Lucas will try to wrap it up for San Diego. The pitchers of record remain. Kent to Colby for Pittsburgh. John Curtis for San Diego. Pittsburgh, by winning the doubleheader last night, moved their record to five and seven. They're only two and a half games behind the front-running St. Louis Cardinals. And so this is a mighty big ball game. There's Lee Lacey, who has had a pretty good record of pinch hitting. He and Jerry Turner, in one year, tied the National League record as we look at Enrico Romo, in case he has to do some pitching in the 10th inning is moving in. Lacey and Jerry Turner both tied the National League record for most home runs as a pinch hitter at five. So Lacey will be coming on the bat for the announced Jason Thompson. <laughs> Lee Lacey, the batter, steps in there with a 288 batting average. One home run, five RBIs, hasn't played a lot, has been up only 111 times. Right-hand batter and good punch. He can reach the seats. Bottom of the ninth, Padres lead 7-6, and Lacey, strike one. Strike two, Lucas found the spot perfectly. And Gary tried for the kill and just did miss. One ball, two strikes, nobody out, nobody on. Padres leading seven to six, last half of the ninth inning. Ozzy. Scoops it up. Lacey cut down at first base, and the play goes six to three. One up, one down. Padres with seven runs on 13 base hits. Pirates six runs on 14 base hits. No errors in the ball game. Padres have left seven men on base. Pittsburgh, but five. Here's Omar Marino. Here's the guy you want to keep up. Two for four tonight. He's been on in the first three ball games and scored five runs. Got 25 stolen bases. 
Padres on top, seven to six. Bottom of the ninth inning. Base hit. Man, that's the wrong guy to let get on. Marina continues to shine here at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. A one-out single. Let's watch the pitch again. A breaking ball and a good stroke by Marino. He just dropped it into right center field. Solid single. Third hit of the night for Marino. He has six hits overall and ten trips. So Lucas will have to keep his eyes peeled for Omar Marino. He can run. Here's Foley. Tim is one for three. Well, manager Chuck Tanner is not above trying it, going for the whole ball of wax. <laughs> On the ground. Just in time to get Foley. Marino at second base with a tying run. The Padres have one more out to get, and that'll be Dave Parker. Well, there's the ball game right here. Parker against Lucas. Dave Parker in the ball game. Sacrifice fly to drive in a run in the first inning. Singleton scored in the third. Crippleton scored in the fifth. Scored another run in the seventh inning. He has been on base all night long. At second base with a tying run is Omar Marino. Right one, do it right by him. Good pitch by Luke. Lucas trying to save it for John Curtis. Padres lead by one, 7-6, two outs, last of the ninth inning. Marino, I can't think of a play that wouldn't allow him to score with his big speed. He'll be off with a crack of the bat. Parker batting at 250, six homers, 33 RBIs. One ball, one strike, breaking ball just off the corner. Look at that big guy, 6 feet 5, 235 pounds. Gary Lucas trying to wrap it up for the Padres. Strike two, one ball and two strikes. Lucas just ripped it right by him. Parker rolled on the other side of the plate, walks back, checks things out. Padres seven runs, 13 hits. Pirates six runs, 15 hits. Tying run at second base with two down. Gary Lucas, calm and cool. He's done a job for the Padres this year. Here's the one-two pitch to Parker. Way outside, nice play by Kennedy. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. It's one-on-one, -on -one. Lucas against Parker, and that's the decision right here in this one. Let's see how it develops, a 2-2 pitch. Three balls and two strikes. Oh, doctor. Behind Parker is the league's leading hitter, Bill Madlock, waiting. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, and there's Madlock leading the league in hitting. A tough right-hand batter. Here's the big pitch coming on to Parker. Three balls, two strikes. Marino representing the tying run. Last of the ninth inning. Two out. There it is. Way outside. Lucas walks the winning run on, and that'll bring up Bill Madlock. Now 
Madlock leads the National League in hitting at 335, and tonight he is two for three. Five for ten in the series. Lined out the short in the first, singled in the third, hit a sacrifice fly to score a run in the fifth, singled in the seventh inning. Bottom of the ninth, the tying run at second base, the winning run at first base. Marino at second, Parker at first, and he can run. The big guy, but under a full head of steam, there aren't too many that can match him. On the ground foul. A good slider in on Madlock, and that's Joe Lynette, the third base coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates. If you just tuned in, the Padres were trailing Pittsburgh 6-3 to three when they got four runs in the eighth inning. The big blow, a bases clearing double by Perkins, and a triple by Ozzie Smith putting the Padres ahead as Frank Howard. You can bet he's a little jittery right now. The one-strike pitch. Down the right field line, that'll be foul off into the corner and out of play. No balls, two strikes. Parker was all the way around second on his way to third. Marino was heading for the plate. Gary Lucas going out to Bill Madlock, a tough man to strike out. He's got a very short stroke at second base Marino. Padres leading 7-6, to six, two out. Last of the ninth inning, no balls, two strikes on Madlock. Runners moving off. Left center field, here comes Richards, and he's got a ball receiver. Gene Richards blinded momentarily by the lights, grabbed on to hang on. And the Padres win this one as Madlock lines out to left field for Pittsburgh in the ninth inning. No runs, a base hit, two men left. The final score, San Diego 7 and Pittsburgh 6.